welcome to another Saturday reaction. This is a very unusual premiere because we don't usually have premieres on a Saturday because usually I'm there on Saturdays to do the actual live streams. However, for this particular one, I am currently in LA. So hello from LA, kind of. Actually in Ohio, obviously right now, recording this, it is a Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. Yesterday was a wonderful Thanksgiving day. I ate so much food like you're supposed to on Thanksgiving. And today's Friday and we have it off. It is freezing, freezing cold. I don't even know yet the result of the Ohio State Shittigan game because it's tomorrow. So all of you, when you watch this next Saturday, you will know that I'm either gonna be absolutely miserable or I'm gonna be really, really surprised and happy. <laughs> It'd be nice to fast forward and kind of get a glimpse to see what it actually is. Although I don't know if I actually would want to know if it wasn't a positive. That's always the age old question. If you knew, like if you had the choice to know how and when you were gonna die, would you choose to know it or would you still choose to be ignorant? That's an interesting question. And in this situation, which is a microcosm of that, I don't know if I would wanna know the result because then it would ruin my day today if they lost, <laughs> which is what I'm expecting. <laughs> so it's kind of like the same thing with death. It's like, if my death is nice and easy and it's quick or whatever, I wouldn't mind knowing, but if it's gonna be like this painful, horrible death, I probably would rather not know. So really it's a what if still. So in the chat, maybe when you guys are listening to this right now, Tell us, would you rather know what your death is going to be? I'm not trying to get all philosophical here on this channel. However, it has been brought up naturally speaking. So would you rather know your death, the time and how, or would you rather be ignorant and just let it take place when it is? It's a very odd question and a very interesting one, I think. But nonetheless, it is now time to get into this set. This is a hodgepodge set. And for those of you who have not joined this channel before or not often, what we used to do is what was called hodgepodges. So the way or the history of this channel, which I'm gonna mention right now, if you are new here, in the description of every video, recent videos anyway, there is a link to an Excel document that shows all the songs that we've done in the history of this channel and kind of when, the date, and who, uh, what subscribers or what person submitted the song for us to review or react to on the channel. And we just, if you have an idea or want to maybe find a certain song or a band that you're interested in, that Excel document's gonna help you. As well, it's where I post all of the future songs and sets that are gonna be coming up. Well, what happened was when this channel started, we had people just submitting one single song reaction for my reaction. And then it got so much that people were asking me to react to songs that I no longer could get to all of them. There were so many that I couldn't get to. So that's when we started charging, as you can see to my, what would that be my left? Uh, what the charging scheme is, uh, because that way I can make sure I get to all the things and suggestions that people are making. And people were just doing one song suggestions, which is now $7. And if you want to know if you're interested in suggesting a song or a band or something like that, watch the introduction video to my channel and that'll tell you how to do that exactly. What that did was uh, we had people that wanted to do more than one song. So they started doing two or three songs and then we just decided to start making sets. And when we started making sets, we would have, uh, instead of just doing one-off songs that I would record and then upload, we started doing live streams and we had a bunch of different people turn in about four to five songs of what we'd call a hodgepodge. So it'd be a hodgepodge of suggestors or subscribers asking us to react to songs or asking me. I don't know why I keep saying us as if I'm eternal and uh, the Trinity. <laughs> but it became a hodgepodge. And then we got away from that because people started submitting sets of songs and becoming the DJ of that day of the live stream. And they would submit four to five songs and you can do that as well. And then now we've kind of gotten back into getting into some hodgepodges again, where people who can't afford necessarily a whole set of songs are just throwing in one song and then we get five songs of different people. And that's what today is. So on today's list, we have a hodgepodge. 
Uh, but this isn't an actual hodgepodge from people turning in songs. This is actually a result of being a winner of a full set by Colin Crompton. And he plays this game called Old or New, and we have now had seven of those. Number eight is going to be coming up in a couple of weeks before Christmas. And if you guess correctly, you can win a free song. So this hodgepodge is all the people who won the last Old or New set, number seven. And those people are, and we're going to go in order of what we're listening to today. First up is Mr. Michael Herman. Then we have Prague Per Lumen. Scott K is the third song. Atharva from India is the fourth song. And then the Ivanator Ivy will be closing us out today with her winning song. Now the uh, stipulation that Colin has laid out for us for this particular set of winners, they had to choose a song that was uh, very speedy, very, I can't remember all of it. Uh, Colin in the chat, please tell us what the actual rules were for them to pick a song. But I do remember it had to be fast and kind of speed metally, something that had some balls and chunk to it. As we like to refer to here on the channel, it had to have some dick hairs to it. And, you know, higher up the dick hair scale, the more balls and chunk it is. So I think the requirement of these songs that these winners had to pick was something that had a lot of speed, fast, heavy, a lot of energy. So lots of balls and chunk and a lot of dick hairs. So we're going to start off first with Mr. Michael Herman. And let's going to see what kind of dick hairs he's going to expose us to. And this is what he says. He says, hey, my choice for the winner set is... Haken and the song is Prosthetic, which is off their Virus album, which we have had on this channel before. So this is going to be a second listen to Prosthetic, which is interesting because for the most part, we don't listen to songs a second time on the channel because I've already heard them. But in this case, and in the case of Caligula's Horse, I think we've listened to Graves about four or five times on this channel. This will be the second time that Prosthetic will be reacted to on this channel. However, this is not a first listen for me. I did a reaction to this. You can go back and look on the Excel doc when I did this. And Prosthetic is one of my favorite songs off the album. It starts off the album. It's a heavy ass, chunky song. It's on my workout playlist. I've heard it many, many times. I know the song in and out. And the only thing I'll say about this is I have no problem listening to it again. A lot of people who are Haken fans, of which I am, didn't really, I feel like Virus kind of got like a mixed emotion response. And if anything, it was more negative than positive from at least what I saw. However, for me, out of all the Haken albums I've listened to, which I've now listened to all of them because of this channel, and they are now tied for my top favorite band because of this channel, I thought Virus was an excellent, excellent, from beginning to end, an excellent album. So Prosthetic is heavy. I love it. And let's kick some ass. He says, it's never been... Part of a set you did, uh, you did it yourself on a premiere, which I was doing Virus the album step by step. I think I was doing three songs at a time. I believe it meets the criteria Colin is asking for. It's fast, has a high voice, and a guitar solo. So maybe that's what it is. I think it's got to be fast or energy, a high voice, I guess, which that's not something I really enjoy usually. However, I don't remember this having a high voice. Uh, a guitar solo, I guess that's another, a, an awesome guitar solo, in which, of course, Haken has good heart guitar solos. By the way, um, he has submitted another set, which uh, we already listened to a week or so ago. So here we go with uh, starting off on this fast, high voice guitar solo hodgepodge of winners from the older new set number seven. Thank you, Colin, once again for doing this. And uh, this is Haken, which is prosthetic. Let's kick some ass. I love when the bass comes in. Yeah! Low and deep and fucking good. so good 
and I love when it goes into the next section. Oh my gosh, it's just so full of energy. This does sound kind of compressed. Yeah, here. I'll turn it up. Drums are wonderfully tuned. I mean, the chorus is high voice, but you missed it here, Michael. Here comes the high voice. But he's not even a head voice, so it's not that high. Back to the beginning. I never have paid attention to the uh, lyrics of the song, so maybe that's what I'll do right now. <laughs> Nil by Mouth is actually from another song of theirs. The heart remembers. And then we go into halftime, which is great. Uh. Keyboard in the background. For me, it's head voice. I mean, I could sing it in full voice, but it certainly wouldn't sound good. The more I stare, the less it becomes. I love that, like. Like doing the hi hat and the ride symbol, kind of. That pattern is really good. It fits with a nice little guitar solo here. And halftime. How can people not like this song? This song is fucking excellent, Haken fans. I don't know if you can notice, but you can tell that part. He's playing with one foot. And it's not. He's playing with one foot. You can tell by the accent of it. Very simple song, to the point, but just balls to the wall energy. Way to start out an album. Ooh. Snarl face, yeah. Coming to an end. Huh. Mm. So fucking heavy. 
heavy. Wonderful. Michael, I'm sure Colin isn't very happy because he just doesn't like Haken. He's got to get over that hump because for the stuff that he likes, he should be able to like some Haken stuff. I'm not saying he needs to like all of it, but he should be able to like some stuff. And I'd be curious, Colin, why you don't like this song because it's got a lot of energy. Very Well, I guess, is, is it you, Colin, that doesn't like the genty sound because it does have a genty hard sound to it? Uh, but it's just fucking energy. When I'm at the gym and that song comes on, I'm ready to kick some serious ass. I don't know how you couldn't like that song. But we have had it on here before. I'm so familiar with the song, so there's really nothing new. Uh, if you really want me to kind of break down more about that song on a first listen, go back and listen to when I actually reacted to this. It had to be like two years ago now, right? It's been a long time. And again, you can go on the Excel document, find that out, and then go searching for it on the channel and you will be able to find it. Uh, I think it's just virus, the whole album, so it shouldn't be hard to find. But thank you, Michael. I think it was an excellent choice. I'm happy with it. One for one so far on the winner's hodgepodge. But let's get ourselves to number two. Number two is going to be Mr. Prague Purr, who I, is this your first submission because you won to the channel? Mr. Lungman, or how, I, I'm trying to remember if you've done another one. I cannot quite remember. So this is what he says for his choice. Nevermore came to mind when searching for preferences within the criteria that Colin suggested or had in mind. But then I discovered Jeff Loomis's solo albums. Wonderful stuff with more shredding within the speedy and why I love it so much groovy metal I like how you put groovy in all caps, too So here's one of the many tracks. I was torn between for my pick um, He said he gave me a couple a Couple of them. He says there's a live like a studio live soloing over the playback and eh, I didn't pick that one I don't think I think I just chose the actual song, but I can't remember what I did so here we go with Jeff Loomis's solo album. And what's the name of the song? I don't think you told us. <laughs> you just said it's the solo album, but you didn't tell us what the song is. So I guess you're going to have to tell us in the, uh, well, uh, let's, let's do it. Just get into it. Okay. Okay. That was a weird drum transition. Yes. Fuck yeah. And I've not heard this before. Dude, that's so heavy. That first part very much sounded similar to like the John Petrucci Necromonicon song. That would be on like a game for Japan. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go back when I go back on the second listen. Because that drum fill at the beginning sounds fucked up. So nice halftime. I'd be surprised if they left a fucked up drum transition in there, but it sounded very off. Oh yeah. Uh, is this like a solo album, right? Uh, nice transition there. I get the groovy aspect that you're talking about. Oh, yeah. Damn. Bell writing stuff is good. Back to the beginning. I know this is going to be a hard sell for some people on the channel because they don't like only instrumental. See? 
Back to that nice... It is interesting because I like that. Yeah, it's the second time he's done that like sweeping stuff. Oh, that was jun 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 jun. It's awesome. Balls to the wall solo. I'm pretty much, you've got like a backing track and then it's just all soloing. I think this is like Jeff Loomis saying, I'm gonna show you guys how good a guitar I am. That's cool. Nice descending. I like this section, it's kind of cool. Nice little break from the uh, arpeggios and tremolos. <laughs> and we're back. Definitely take a toll to play this live. Okay. Is that the end? Oh, that was kind of an abrupt end. All right. Well, Mr. Lugman. I would say that was definitely a, uh, what's what I'm looking for, a nice little tutorial <laughs> to show us how fucking technical and talented Mr. Loomis is, for sure. So my reaction to it is that I definitely liked it in the beginning, balls to the wall, but I did get lost in the soloing aspect of it. Because when I think about it, which is why I think a lot of people get kind of tired or don't really dig instrumental songs, it's because it lacks melody a lot. And so just like, in my opinion, a song has a particular framework that makes it a good song. It has, just like a story, I've said this many times on the channel, you have like an exposition where you kind of introduce the characters, the idea, the themes... And then you have kind of the verse, which is like the main, like, I don't know, that you come back to a couple of times. But then you also have the center of the song or the climax, which tends to be the chorus. And the chorus is kind of your hook. And I'm not saying it has to follow that completely, but it that's kind of the structure. And when you don't have a voice providing you a melody that's going throughout that you can kind of capture and grab onto... It's easy to get lost in the weeds. And that's why, like, take uh, Joe Satriani, I would even say... So even in... Okay, in the solo world, I would put, like, Joe Satriani and John Petrucci a little bit over on the side where they construct their solo album songs to be more melodic that have a theme running throughout the song and kind of follow the same writing of a song it just doesn't have a singer but the guitar takes on the singer of the song for a majority of the song and they have a melody running throughout um terminal velocity is a perfect example uh, yeah there's just a lot of songs reina's song has that it it has this melody but it also has soloing as a part of it like you would in a normal song you have a song that has a verse chorus bridge 
and then you have a solo section and then you go back to it. They kind of do that. On the other hand, uh, I would say that maybe this Jeff Loomis, I would almost say that I would guess Michael Romeo would be sort of like this as well. And I think that Steve Vai is more on this side, but he's less on this side than maybe the ones I just mentioned, where it's more about the soloing than it is about the theme of the song or writing of a song. Just like this song, it had like the jun, 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 like backing track that kind of made the key or whatever where the where they're going in the song and just laid down the foundation. But the whole rest of the song was just soloing. There wasn't like the guitar really playing a melody that you grab onto like you would a normal song. So in that case, I don't dig it as much. I kind of got lost in the weeds with it. Amazing technique, but I felt like it suffered on the songwriting side of it. That would be my reaction to it. And I think in general, solo guitarists fall in these two camps where maybe they fo one, and I would even say within an album you can do that. Like you can have the majority of the songs on the album be more melody driven with some soloing, or you can have a song that's just all like this, where it's just all soloing over a, like a backtrack. I feel like there's certain artists that are guitar solo artists that focus more on the technical solo -y side of it, and then there's ones that write as a song. I'm going to prefer the guys that write more as a song with a melody still and a catchy quote unquote chorus of chords than just like constant soloing throughout the whole thing and just ripping shit. So on the ripping shit side, he did a great job. On the songwriting side, I wouldn't say this is a song that was gonna be very memorable to me. That is a way too long explanation, but that's my thoughts, Mr. Pur Prog Purr. Okay, let's get on to the next song because we are already like several minutes into this because <laughs> I'm talking a lot, which is okay. That's a reaction channel, right? So the next up is Mr. Scott K bringing us right in the middle of the set. He says, thanks again, Colin, for being completely awesome and gifting these opportunities to the community and handing out free songs. And we've said this on many times before, and I'm saying it again, Colin, you are just a bloke. You're just a great bloke. Yet here I go again. Oh, great. Providing even more evidence as to why that's a bad idea. <laughs> that's pretty funny, Scott. Last time I tortured everyone with some black metal, so I won't do that this time. Instead, I decided to go with tech death. Here we go again with these like tech death. So I'm guessing there's electronic stuff within like a very power, like fast kind of metal stuff. So let's just see. He says, enjoy. The band is called the Zenith Passage. The song is called Lexi Contagion. Lexi Contagion, I think is what you say. He says, warning, it's the official music video with lots of flashing lights. If you are sensitive to that, then please turn away. Okay, thank you. Now, I don't think I have to worry about it as much because I'm going to upload this instead of doing it live. So we'll see if this makes it through by the time that we get to Saturday. Here we go with the Zenith Passage and it's Lexi Contagion, I think is how you say it. Number three, let's go. Very tight and very crisp, very compressed. Okay, like with a lot of Scott songs, I'm digging the instrument so far, but we'll see what the voice does if it fucking crushes it for me. I like this. Definitely odd times and everything already. Ooh, did, did you add that extra couple beats? At least it's not streaming. At least it's ooh, Cookie Monster music. I hear the metal in it, the death metal. I'm not getting the tech part of it. Is it that that makes it sound more techy, or is it just the background with all the LEDs going on? What makes this tech? Yes. Don't like the vocals, but I'll say it's not ruining it for me. 
That doesn't mean it's good or that I'm becoming better at listening to these vocals. Just don't go there, Scott. Ooh, that was some fast. Nice, a good break. Nice chord choices too, because they're ominous. Favorite part of the song right here. Part of the death, just the background. Like you're in a club. So I don't hear anything tech about this. Nice. Great tapping. Oh, very Bach-esque. Okay, now we're back to the death part. Nice. Disillusion, is that what he said? Ooh, it's at the end. Well, that was a quickie. Okay, I'm gonna say uh, that if it were not for that middle section, I guess, where it got kind of like chill and they actually did some chords and he went into the solo, which I thought was very good, wasn't overdone. I liked a lot of the chord choices, the ominous chord choices. He wasn't picking things that were obvious in the slower section of things. If that had not been there, I probably would have been bored as shit after the first two minutes of it. I really think that uh, instilled some like life into the song because it was a bit different, which is one of the things that is generally off-putting for me when it comes to like death or the really just the mashuga kind of stuff is that it gets so repetitive almost that it just drones on that I can't I can't dig it I get bored after a couple seconds but that nice middle section made it very very uh palate cleansing <laughs> especially because there were some like clean vocals in there from the growling cookie monster stuff and I don't like it but it didn't ruin it for me it's not I I, I think I've come to the understanding that the higher screams that we'll call it, the screaming, the ah, da, 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 is way worse than the rah, 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 rah. <laughs> And I think that goes in general with just music and vocal harmony. I tend to prefer vocal harmony that's like middle C or lower versus middle C and higher because it just doesn't sound as good. Like when you have like good, um, I don't know, men's choruses and stuff like that, that you have like a bass, baritone, tenor one, tenor two, those harmonies, when they go to get, just sound very good. But when you get like a alto one and two soprano kind of higher range harmonies, it just doesn't sound as good. It's not as appealing. And so I think that applies to also the growling. If it's a lower, blah, 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 even if I don't like it that much, it's much more palatable than the stuff. Um, doesn't sound as whiny, I guess. So now that we've listened to three songs, I think the way I'm going to rate them is nothing's going to be prosthetic, I'm guessing. So I'm going to say, uh, shoot, this is going to be tough between two and three. So one is number one, which would be prosthetic. And then I'm going to put this number three as my second because it had more to it than just the soloing. And then 
then uh, number two would be my number three. So that's where we're gonna be at right now. Let's move on to the next one, which is our Indian friend named Atharva. He has said this to everyone. Hi everyone. So after a long time, which he did take a long time to turn in his song, so it's good that he thought about it a lot. I got a chance to showcase a song to you guys. I have selected this song as per Collins instructions. It has high tempo and shreddy guitar. The band is called, I think, The Downtroddens, or maybe that's the song. Uh, I think, yeah, I think the band is The Downtroddens, and then the song is called Shiva, which I'm wondering if that's a B sound, like Shiba, uh, which is funny because in Korean, Shiba is, means like fuck you or fucker. So it kind of sounds like Shiba, Shiba, Shiba. <laughs> this band is actually new to me. I only know this one song from them and will have to explore the discography more. It is an Indian thrash metal band from, I think it's Kerala State. Is that how you say it? Kerala State. The top link is one without the music video as the audio quality is not good. But if you want to check it out, I have given it at the bottom. I don't know which one I did. The music video depicts the story of Ravana's demon who was killed by Lord Ram and Ramayana. Penance for Lord Shiva's blessing. Okay. Angry at Shiva's silence, Ravana, I think it's Ravana, goes to Kalasa, a sacred mountain in India. Dude, come on. You're just doing this on purpose to make me sound like a douche. And plays this shloka. Ooh like shlong, shloka, mantra, the shloka means mantra, with a vena made out of his intestine. That's interesting. The video also shows Patman Thayam, 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 I don't know, an art form which tells the story between Sankaracharya and Lord Shiva. Come on, bro. It's It briefs the meeting of Lord Shiva discuss, disguised as... Pulayan, uh, Pulayan, Pulayan, downtrodden, which means downtrodden, with the intention to further test Sankaracharya, Charya's knowledge, who is proud of himself and about to ascend Sarwanja Pidam, throne of knowledge, is what that means. Don't forget to headbang. Okay, and the second link is a low audio quality music video. I have no idea what I picked. I guess we're gonna find out. But um, Atharva, I'm just gonna say, not funny that you did all that. And honestly, I think the rest of the crowd is gonna have to go back and rewind to get what you actually said because so much of it was me trying to pronounce something that I can't. <laughs> so good luck with that. Go back and rewind afterwards if you really wanna know the behind the scenes of what this song is about because I was trying to pronounce all these names and missed the whole point. So here we go with number four. This is the downtrodden, which mean, which is in uh, whatever language it is, is um, Pulya, Pulayan, Pulayan, which means downtrodden. <laughs> here we go. It's probably sacrilege to say that. Yeah, I think that that's definitely going to take the place of number two only because I know prosthetic so well and I love it already so much, kind of unfair, but also because of the singing, like I thought the singing was quite lazy for most of it. Uh, when he stopped singing, uh, the riffage and the instrumental parts of it were superb and good. And I like how they changed uh, levels, so to speak, in the song itself. That song will definitely go on a playlist, uh, especially my uh, gym playlist. So right now I'm gonna say it's uh, one, four, three, two, right? Wait, yeah, the Loomis song is last for me. Who did the Loomis song? Was that Progper? Yeah, so I'm sorry. Was that number two? <laughs> Let me look again, jeez. Yes, so it's now one, four, three, two. That's easy, one, four, three, two is my the song is called Jato Unit from Jeff Loomis. I just saw that because I have it on my sheet. So number one is Haken. Number two is the Downtrodden. And number three is the Zenith Passage. Uh, and then Jeff Loomis is coming in at fourth right now. Sorry, Pragper. <laughs> None of these have been bad songs, but I definitely like this song second to Haken. 
So, all right, that brings us to our last one. Uh, the last person on our list is Miss Ivanator. Uh, let's see what Miss Ivanator brings to us. She says, hey, Cap, this is Ivy. I can't remember what email I used before, so I figured I'd say who this is in the case it wasn't the one. Yeah, you sent it to my other one, which is okay, because I just sent it to myself. <laughs> Uh, for my song, I wasn't sure what to submit that would meet Mr. Collins' requirements, so I just decided to go with a classic. Hope you all enjoy, and Colin, you are a gentleman and a scholar, sir. Yes, you are. So this is our final song. She doesn't say what it is, and I forget what it is, so I don't know. Let's find out. Here we go with the last song of the day. Oh, another song. Uh, this is uh, Judas Priest. Yeah, especially because um, I actually learned of this song mostly because Portnoy does a whole string of like song, drum song intros, and he does this song. And I was like, what is that drum intro to when he did it? And I was like, I have no idea, so I checked it out. And yes, I remember not liking the vocals. <laughs> but it is a classic. Does have high pitch vocals. I mean, I know this song, but I don't know it though. I definitely don't think it's on a playlist. I'm sure that's sacrilege. Saying I don't really like Judas Priest that much, but it's kind of like that metal that just doesn't uh, have enough dick hairs for me. When did this song come out? I can't remember. Is this a... Uh, I think that Jack Black has covered this, too, because I remember him doing this part. Or I should say Tenacious D, not just Jack Black. I think I've heard them do a version of this. Because this is, like, right up Jack Black's alley. Nice. Yeah, I do remember the solo being good. For whatever reason, this just reminds me of Breakfast Club, like, the kind of music that, like, Judd Nelson's character would like. So, this is definitely more pop metal. I know I'm probably going to get flamed by the Judas Priest fans for saying that. But to me, it's more of in the, the popular metal side of things, not like... Uh, what I'm sure you guys know it better than me. What's uh, the guitar player's name? Because he's excellent. Yeah, it's so funny. The sound of this has a very Black Sabbath sound. Bum, bum. 
bomb. I'm wondering how many of the people in the chat are real, like, Judas Priest followers. Because, I, I, obviously, everyone knows who they are, and they're popular, and whatever, but how many people in this, <coughs> this group, which I would be surprised if there's anybody who loves these guys. Maybe Adrian? A little bit? Like, like you guys? I think everybody else would kind of have, like, a... Like a a respect for them from afar. Another solo, baby. <laughs> Lots of pinch harmonics. <laughs> but at least in this song, the guitar players, the best part of the band, for sure. Nice. I think I know this song less than I thought I did. <laughs> I love that stare at the end. Okay, so as I said, I know Judas Priest from afar. I'm definitely, I wouldn't say I'm a fan. I don't honestly know them enough or know their discography enough to say I'm a fan or not. They have that, I would say, typical sound of Black Sabbath and that kind of stuff. Not as ballsy and chunky for me uh, as much, especially this song. Uh, again, I don't know their discography, so maybe they are in their other parts, of the other songs that they do. Uh, but I know of them because they are who they are. They're Judas Priest. So I'm sure I'm going to get flamed in the comments if some random Judas Priest dude comes and says, how dare this dude? <laughs> but I think I got into music after... Uh, the, the way I came into music in general, because I grew up with nothing but a soccer and baseball background. That's what I did my whole life. I was a sports jock. I was, that's what I did. Had no musical ability whatsoever in my life uh, all the way up through high school. So high school was when I first started getting into music. So people who grew up like having music as a hobby was not me. So there's just a lot of um, missing pieces of like popular music that people are like, how is it possible that you don't really know that stuff? I just don't because I didn't, it wasn't, it was like music was like a side note for me until I got into high school. And then once I started getting into music and started learning it and understanding it, then I started picking up bands, but the bands that I picked up were in a different realm. And so therefore it kind of left me not really caring about some of this other stuff that for most other people, like I think Iron Maiden falls in that for me. I'm I'm not really a fan of Iron Maiden. I don't really like their stuff that much. There are I, I am familiar with a couple of their songs. Judas Priest is like that for me as well. Uh, but for those people where that was the pinnacle of like their music kind of liking and and fandom, I, I missed that boat and I never went back to it, so to speak. So uh, as far as where would I rate this? Um, it's definitely, let's see, so number one is still the Haken song. The downtrodden song, Sheba, is number two for me. I would say, yeah, the Zenith Passage would still be number three, and it's a toss-up between this and the Jeff Loomis song. I would say this, this song would go before the Jeff Loomis song only because I felt like it has like a memorable, especially drum intro, it has a memorable kind of ABAB -A -B style, uh, but I wouldn't say I love it. Out of all of these songs, I think the only one that will go on a playlist for me because Prosthetic already is on a playlist for me would be the Downtrodden Sheba song. So nice job of Tharba, at least for me, because I freaking like that song a lot. Uh, it was definitely gonna go on a playlist. So 
That wraps us up here. Uh, I will be in LA while you guys watch this. I probably will not be able to join for the stream. Uh, I will be doing other things. But hopefully you guys enjoy it and uh, get to see each other's picks for your older new set uh, winners. Congratulations again. Uh, up next will be a week from this Saturday, uh, which will be December the 9th. And that is going to be our actual hodgepodge hodgepodge, not hodgepodge of winners, but hodgepodge of people just turning in a song each. And that will be Paravarium, Jason Gentry. We have a band called Avelion, a part of that. Avalon, I don't know how you say it. Colin's got his own song. And then, of course, Scott K has a song as well. And then we skip to the next Sunday uh, or the next day, which is December 10th, which we have a new subscriber turning in their first set, Chris W. And the next one is Saturday, December 16th, uh, Colin Crompton's set, Old or New 8, where you get a chance to win another song. So join us for that. All right. You guys have a great Saturday for you and we will see you on the other side. So peace out. This is the captain saying, have a great week.